reading a lot about it because I know how hard it was to do. And I said, man, this is, I can't wait to take my 12-year-old to see this. Really, that's nice. I think mother and daughters will not hit Utah and Arizona, a place like that. It wound around and dropped into Montana. Oh, so wow. we were getting... But well, you know what? It made a prettier film in a way because it gave oh, yeah. the mountains the texture. Absolutely. I kept watching the clouds and it was cool. That was the good news. Right, here we go. Okay. Do you dream film? I'm glad you said film. Um, <laughs> no. Never no, had a movie I, in your I, dreams? No. No. Except my life. That was just a bad movie. <laughs> Call it a nightmare. How about movies that, uh, you know, movie, movie set experiences ever that angst you actors seem to get sometimes, or directors, you know, oh my God, you know, we went over today, or one of those nervous night, nightmare dreams. Well, you know, they're, they're not dreams, they're just realities. You wake up and face them. They don't, they don't stay as dreams. It, it, I might be provoked mm -hmm. by a dream, but I usually wake up and agonize consciously, mm -hmm. wide awake, which is the worst. So Robert Redford, the director, finally got to meet Robert Redford, the actor. Did he get to beat him up? Yeah, they beat each other up pretty good. Um, I had mixed feelings about it. I wasn't sure that I wanted to ever direct myself as an actor because I thought it took something that I, I wasn't sure I'd be comfortable with. It takes a kind of calculation and watching yourself. It's a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing? Yeah, I guess so. It depends on who you are, I guess. It could either be Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde, or Mr. Jekyll, <laughs> Mr. Jekyll. But it is Jekyll and Hyde in this case in that I liked to be, uh, I liked acting, um, in the space of acting and not think about anything else. Just being with the person I was supposed to be with, being in the space I was supposed to be in and not think about cameras or the vocabulary of film and just being in it and being present in that space. As a director, you watch the, the space widens. It's like a screen that opens up mm -hmm. and you, you take in a lot more. And I like that as a director. So I wasn't sure, as a director, I was, it was more akin to what I started out to be, which was a painter. So it was much closer to that, which was very gratifying. And so is there Robert Redford, the painter? He's still alive. Is Robert Redford, the cowboy? He's kind of a part of you, too, because mm -hmm. you look so comfortable doing that. I am. Is the painter, does he rear his head every once in a while? All the time, because the painter has to control the cowboy. Mm -hmm. you know? He has to paint the cowboy. So, yeah, it's both are true. I, I began as an artist. It never really left my system. Even though I became an actor, I would painter sketches as a hobby. It was nice when it came back as a director and I realized that. I didn't know about that until it happened. And as an actor, um, you know, the, the idea, the one advantage, the reason I think that a lot of actors want to direct, I don't blame them at all. Not that they can necessarily do it, but I don't blame them for wanting to because when you're an actor, you give yourself over, you put yourself in the hands of someone else entirely who might have a different vision than you do, mm -hmm. uh, might not um, be the human you are. And that's a tough go. And so therefore, I think any actor longs for the ability to control what they do because they're working with emotions. So that's just a normal thing. Musical taste. Are you like the character in the film that likes classical music? Or do you have country on your radio? Or are you listening to Led Zeppelin? I mean, where are you musically? I'm, I'm all over the place. But I, I'm partial to two uh, pieces of music, uh, classical because of its longevity and its durability mm -hmm. and um, the fashion doesn't uh, hurt it and jazz which was uh, it, which impacted me early in my life I happened to just be in the right place at the right time when jazz started in mm -hmm. the West Coast in the, in the early 50s then there's in this case um, what interested me was Western music yeah. there's a difference between Western and country Absolutely. not everybody realizes that the Western music is very specific and very authentic I like the idea of bringing that into the film because the film attempts anyway to, to show an authentic West, not a, not a fashion West, you know, like some of these fashion designers or, you know, they, they show the cowboy, whether it's the Marlboro mm -hmm. ad or fashion magazines. It's not really the way it is. And so there, it was a, a happy thing to try to put the West really on film. And you may have discovered a new country and or Western singer, Alison Moore. She does a great job in your movie. And you must have liked her. You let the song go on a long time. Yeah, I can I tell. Did. Yeah, I did. Well, obviously. I mean, she's the kind of performer, she's a real find, and she's going to be around quite a while, as long as she wants to be. And you shot her music video? I did, because I think she's such a talent, and she's, look, she's one of those performers that all you have to do is turn her loose and put the camera in the right place and just let her go. She takes care of the rest of it. Do you have any mountains left to climb? I mean, you've done a lot. Well, you mean metaphorically? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Otherwise, I'd go home. 
I mean, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You and I wouldn't be sitting here if I felt it was over. Uh, there, there will always. There's not a lifetime. There's not enough lifetimes to probably cover the things I want to do. So there'll always be, if that's what you want to call it, there'll always be a mountain to climb. I like climbing mountains. But you know, in your case, I thought of this as I watched the film last night, and I was kind of mad about it. I know you have your own agenda about what you want to do with your life and that's your business. As a fan, I've always liked Robert Redford, the actor and the director, maybe even more the actor. And I haven't seen enough of him in the last 15 years. We see you every once in a while, but I think that's kind of a, a gift that you've been given that you don't use enough. I, well, it's nice to hear gift, um, but you're right. Uh, I won't deny it. Um, I don't know that I have a, a great explanation for it other than I've always been pretty selective. It's hard to commit uh, a year or so of your life, um, put the kind of energy and the psychic emotion into your work unless it's something you believe in and, and the industry pretty much in the last decade or so has been moving towards a high-tech special effect industry that where people, actors are called on to have themselves blown apart. Mm -hmm. That's not particularly appealing to me. I started in the theater and literature was, literature and story and character are important to me so if it's not there I'm not likely to go there just to make money. And if history would have been different you would have been in The Graduate instead of Dustin Hoffman? I heard that story oh, once, that you were offered that part, but they didn't buy you, is it? No, they, it was offered, um, and I had mixed feelings about it. And it really boiled down to, because um, I liked Mike Nichols, you know, I'd done Barefoot in the Park with him. And we, we had a great time. They really said Robert Redford never lost, heard a woman say no to him. Well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story going that's not around. I just checked my high school <laughs> career. But um, no, that's all myth that comes with iconography, I guess, but the uh, graduate was just really simple. Mike had a vision of the character, I had a vision of the character. The vision that he had, it was very simple, I, I'll never forget it. Uh, I was interested in the guy, but a different guy than he was interested in. He saw a man that when the film opened, he was on a, a conveyor thing in the airport, you know, where people don't want to walk. Mm -hmm. And a guy is standing there on this conveyor belt and uh, he wants to get off wants to jump off, and but can't. And I saw a guy that leaps off, but can't get back on. And that was the difference. Dustin, thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank, I, you. thank you. <laughs> Gave the poor boy some work. 